Hi, welcome to Psychology. This is Methods of Therapy, Chapter 19. Section 1. The various methods of psychotherapy seek to help troubled individuals. There are a variety of methods and types of professionals involved in psychotherapy. Individual therapy and group therapy both have advantages. The main idea is therapy falls into two basic categories, psychological-based therapy and biological-based therapy. Both forms of therapy can help increase awareness and change behavior. So what are the main goals of psychotherapy? What are the three main categories of professionals who practice psychotherapy? And how do individuals in group therapy compare? These are the questions you want to be able to answer upon completion of this section. Methods for treating psychological problems and disorders fall into two general categories, psychological and biological. Psychotherapy is a psychologically based therapy that involves verbal interactions between trained professional and a person, the client or patient who is seeking help for psychological problem. Biologically based therapies involve using drugs or other medical procedures. Helping the individual gain insight or a new perspective is important because many psychological problems are a result of negative outlooks and misinterpretations. The most commonly used methods of psychotherapy are psychoanalysis, humanistic therapy, cognitive therapy, and behavior therapy. Methods of psychotherapy. The main goals of commonly used methods of psychotherapy are shown here psychoanalysis to replace avoidant behavior with coping behavior to reduce inappropriate feelings of anxiety and guilt. Humanistic therapy is to remove obstacles in the path of self-actualization. Cognitive therapy is to replace self-defeating attitudes and beliefs with rational self-enhancing attitudes and beliefs. Behavior therapy to replace self-defeating behavior with adaptive self-enhancing behavior. There are two types, there are, there are types of mental health professional, counseling psychologists that treat people with less serious psychological problems and often work in educational institutions. Clinical psychologists work in hospitals, clinics, or health centers. Psychiatrists are medical doctors and can prescribe medicines and psychological, psychiatric nurses and social workers also have people with, help people with problems. Selecting the right professional. What is a professional's field? What degree does the professional hold? Is the professional licensed by the state? And what therapist plans for treatment and how long will the treatment likely take? What is the estimated cost of the treatment? So there are several types of professionals. Practice psychotherapy, five are listed here, along with the training examples of their work places and typical therapeutic practices. Counseling psychologist has a PhD, uh, a Psy doctorate, or an Ed doctorate. Educational institutions such as college and high schools or businesses refer clients with serious problems to clinical psychologists. Clinical psychologist usually has a PhD, a psychology doctorate, or an Ed education doctorate. They work in hospitals and clinics and assist and treat people with psychological problems. They are able to do, um, psychiatrists or MDs are able to practice medicine and perform operations. The psychiatric social worker is a medical social worker and counsels people with everyday personal and family problems. Psychiatric nurse is an RN and dispenses medicine and acts as a contact person between counseling sessions. Individual versus group therapy. Frequently people who seek help for psychological problems have a choice between individual and group therapy. Both types have their advantages. The advantages of individual therapy is a better for people who need more personal attention or will feel uncomfortable talking about their problems in front of a group. Advantages of group therapy. Group therapy helps individuals realize they are not alone. Members can gain insight and receive support for people who have experienced the same struggles. 
types of group therapy, couples, family, and shared problem therapy. Self-help groups are compared to people who share the same problems. They often meet with the presence of the, a therapist. Section two, psychoanalytic and humanistic approaches. Psychoanalysis is a method of therapy that was developed by Sigmund Freud. Some techniques of psychoanalysis include free association, dream analysis, and transference. The primary goal of humanistic therapy is to help individuals reach their full potential. So the main idea of this section is psychoanalysis and humanistic therapy are two important methods of treatment. So in your notes, you should have at the completion of this section, how did Freud view the role of psychoanalysis? What are some of the methods of psychoanalysis? And what is the goal of humanistic therapy? Psychoanalysis was developed by Sigmund Freud and literally means the analysis of the psyche. First method used in Western countries and has become less popular in recent years. Freud believed most problems originate in childhood experiences and conflicts. Psychoanalysts try to reduce anxiety and guilt by helping clients become aware of unconscious thoughts, feelings at the root of their problems. The self-awareness is called insight. One of the methods he used was free association. The analyst asks the client to relax and then to say whatever comes to mind. It's tied to the Freud's use of hypnosis. Resistance is a client's reluctance to discuss issues raised during free association. It allows patients to express troubling thoughts and feelings. Dream analysis is another method that Freud used. Dream analysis, the analyst interprets the content of the dreams and unlock the thoughts and feelings. Manifest content is the actual content of the dream as remembered. The latent content is the hidden meaning of the dream. Transference. With the time, many patients begin to view their relationship with the therapist as being similar to another relationship. They expect the therapist to act in the same way as the primary of relationship a process called transference. The evaluation of psychoanalysis. Many psychologists believe that Freud put too, many, too much emphasis on sexual and aggressive urges and underestimated the problem, importance of conscious ideas and behaviors. And it's not a useful treatment for a major depression for bipolar or schizophrenia. Brief psychoanalysis is a shorter terms have become more common in recent decades. Brief psychoanalysis has more limited focus and focuses on fixing a specific problem. When it comes to humanistic therapy, the primary goal of humanistic therapy is to help individuals develop awareness and self-acceptance. The method assumes people are basically good and people with psychological problems can heal using their inner sources, resources. Talking openly, person-centered therapy is talking openly about whatever may be troubling an individual and is called non-directive therapy. Active listening involves the listener repeating, repeating and rephrasing the speaker's statements. Unconditional positive regard from the therapist is important, uh, and this is where they accept anything that the person has said. They don't judge. Um, Nearly three-fourths of the people obtaining person-centered therapy showed greater well-being on average than those who did not. It works best for people with anxiety, mild depression, or social problems. Public therapy. Guests on talk shows and troubled celebrities make their psychological problems the center of entertainment. Artists have shown the strangers enjoy, just enjoy discussing problems with strangers in public place. Are the people who seek help on television shows uh, really seeking help or are they being exploited for entertainment? One reason people may ask, uh, seek attention or on their psychological problem is from isolation from modern society. So where does the appeal of talking to a stranger even without counseling credentials come from? People go no longer, people go longer without face-to-face -face conversation in a modern world. So let's talk about section three, cognitive therapy and behavior therapy. 
The aim of cognitive therapy is to help people learn to think about their problems in more productive ways. The goal of behavior therapy is to help people develop more adaptive behavior. So the main idea of this section is cognitive therapy and behavior therapy help people develop new ways of thinking and behaving. So upon completion of this section, you should be able to answer what's the aim of cognitive therapy and what is the aim of behavior therapy. Both cognitive and behavior therapists encourage clients to focus on their thoughts and actions. The aim of cognitive therapy is to help people learn to think about problems in more productive ways and change their ways of thinking. Two common methods of rational emotive and cognitive restructuring. Rational emotive behavior therapy is based on the belief that people are basically logical in their thinking and actions. The assumptions upon which they base their thinking or actions are sometimes incorrect. The goal of the therapy is to identify and then change false assumptions. Methods include role playing and homework assignments. Aaron Beck identified several types of illogical thought processes that lead to emotional problems. Arbitrary interference or drawing conclusions for which there is no evidence. Selective ab abstraction is drawing conclusions on a single detail while ignoring the other details. The overgeneralization is drawing a conclusion from a single experience. Therapists guide clients to observe, identify, and then change their thought patterns. Evaluation of cognitive therapy it tends to be short-term method. It studies how show modifying irrational beliefs helps people with anxiety, depression, and personality disorders. It's helpful for major depression in some people who were only responsive to medicine and biological therapies. It provides coping skills that reduce the risk of recurrence. Behavior therapy, the goal is to help people develop more adaptive behavior. To behaviorists, the be reasons for unhealthy behavior is not important. Changing the behavior is what matters. There are two main categories are counter conditioning and operant conditioning. Counter conditioning pairs a stimulus that triggers an unwanted behavior, such as fear of spiders with a new and more desirable behavior. Systematic desensitization therapist trains the client to relax in the presence of anxiety producing situation. Modeling is client observes and then imitates the therapist or another person coping with the feared object or situation. Aversive conditioning is where the therapist replaces a positive response to a stimulus with a negative response. People who learn more desirable behavior increase their self esteem and lead uh, res less restrictive lives. Operant conditioning is based on the assumption that behavior that is reinforced tends to be repeated, whereas behavior that is not reinforced tends to be extinguished. Therapists teach clients to behave in a certain way to achieve a desired consequence. It is sometimes proven effective in more severe cases that were resistant to other outcomes or other treatments. Sometimes people find gradually changing to be easier. Successive approximation is a series of behaviors that gradually become more similar to a target behavior. Evaluation of behavior therapy. Behavior therapy tends to be somewhat more effective overall than the psychoanalysis or person-centered therapy. It is a short-term therapy, and so it can bring about lasting results in just a few months. Cognitive behavior therapy attempts to change the way a person both thinks and behaves. Aversive therapy is the end of a harmful behavior. The technique is to associate the behavior with a painful situation. Uh, associating a behavior with aversive st stimulation makes the behavior offensive. So of this kind of aversive thing might be uh, where you snap your rubber band every time you say a profanity um, and uh, eventually uh, you would learn to quit saying profanities. Um, operant is encourage adaptive behavior. 
reinforce adaptive behavior or avoid reinforcement of maladaptive behavior. The reinforcement increases and the lack of reinforcement extinguishes the behavior. Biological therapy. Biological therapy relies on medication, electric shock, and surgery to help people deal with psychological disorder. Because these treatments are medical in nature, they must be administered by a physician. Electroconvulsive therapy and psychosurgery are both controversial procedures. The biological therapy relies on methods such as medication, electric shock, surgery to help people with psychological disorders. So what you should remember at the end of this section is how are the major categories of drugs used in therapy? What is electroconvulsive therapy? And how would you define psychosurgery? Biological therapy attempts to alleviate psychological problems by affecting the nervous system. Because these treatments are medical in nature, they must be administered or prescribed by psychiatrists or other physicians. Four major types of medication are commonly used. Anti-anxiety drugs, antidepressant drugs, lithium, and antipsychotic drugs. Anti-anxiety drugs or antidepressant drugs are also sometimes used in treatment of such problems as eating disorders or panic disorders. It, they work by depressing the activity of the nervous system. The common side effects are fatigue and, de, uh, and dependency. Antidepressant drugs are also sometimes used in the treatment of such problems as eating disorders and panic disorders. They work by increasing the amount of one or both neurotransmitters. Common side effects are escalated heart rate and weight gain. Mood stabilizing drugs as lithium helps people with bipolar disorder. Common side effects are shakiness, memory loss, and thirst. Antipsychotic drugs are prescribed to people with schizophrenia. They work by lowering dopamine. Common side effects are with uh, balance and coordination. The homeless and therapy. A large percentage of homeless population has a severe psychological disorder. Some are antipsychotic drugs that have allowed them to be deinstitutionalized. De 20 to 25 percent of single adult homeless population suffers from a mental illness. Five to seven percent of homeless people with mental illness require hospitalization. 30 percent of homeless people with addiction disorders and 33% of homeless population are untreated psychiatric illnesses. So the next method of uh, biological er, is electroconvulsive therapy. Uh, it's commonly called electric shock therapy, and it was introduced in the 1930s. After anesthesia, it's administered as an electric current and is passed through a person's brain. The current... <laughs> hmm... The current causes convulsions, violent involuntary contractions of muscles. Once the antipsychotic has become available, electroconvulsive therapy has u was used much less often. It is controversial for uh, several reasons. Many are uncomfortable causing convulsions in their patients, and it often it creates memory problems. Um, if you remember, uh, Carrie Fisher from Star Wars, uh, she had problems with depression and she found electroconvulsive therapy very useful. Psychosurgery is brain surgery that is performed to treat psychological disorders. Uh, the most famous of these is prefrontal lobotomy. It was used to reduce agitation and violence of people with severe psychological disorders. It involves cutting nerve pathways in the brain. It produces serious side effects such as reduced learning ability, overeating, and apathy, even more controversial than in electroconvulsive therapy. Um, nowadays, the, the prefrontal lobotomy is generally considered unethical. It, it can still be used, but it's not uh, it recommended. Uh, the overprescription of drugs. Antipsychotic drugs are being prescribed 
at an increasingly high rate, even though these effect these drugs, especially on the young, have not been studied as carefully as some would like. One study found that children on Medicaid were more likely to be prescribed these drugs because the Medicaid program would approve them. Pharmaceutical companies stand to make billions of dollars if their products become more widely used, even though they may harm patients. The serious side effects of uh, medication is that uh, it can be harmful to patients, especially in children. Children often react differently to medications than do adults. And for drug companies, there's a financial incentive to encourage their use, even when the therapy is not necessarily the best treatment. This concludes Chapter 19, uh, Methods of Therapy. And we will uh, uh, move on to Chapter 20 next time.